Native people, Native culture, Native knowledge. Hi, I'm Jeannie Green, bringing you award-winning Heartbeat Alaska. Bringing you national and international Native news, this is award-winning Heartbeat Alaska, the premier Native voice in Native programming. There's a Heartbeat Alaska. Here's Jeannie Hello, Green. Hello, welcome to Heartbeat Alaska, Native News and Native Entertainment. I'm Jeannie Green. Thank you so much for joining us. Today, I'd like to say hello to our good friends on the East Coast in Maine, the Passamaquoddy Tribe. Thank you so much for joining us once again for Native News and Native Information. We travel north today across villages. We also travel south to the Seminole Tribe, and we have new music videos. Thanks to Mr. Brower from Barrow, Alaska. We have music videos from Greenland. Here's John Active with Native News Across the Country. I'll be back right after that, so don't go away. <laughs> Heartbeat Alaska with your news. Heartbeat Alaska, 5861 Arctic Boulevard, Unit B, Anchorage, Alaska, 99518. That's Heartbeat Alaska, 5861 Arctic Boulevard, Unit B, Anchorage, Alaska, 99518. Or give us a call at 1-907-563-7440 or fax us at 1-907-563-9309. Heartbeat Alaska, your news is our news. Welcome back. John Active, award-winning journalist, is with us now with Native news across the country. Thanks, Jeannie. Facing a federal probe and attacks on his honest guy image, Interior Secretary Bruce Babbitt says he's the victim of his own stupidity. The former Arizona governor who built a reputation as a champion of clean government acknowledges that his political world would not be under assault had he not made a quote stupid, unquote, decision in 1995 to allow a lobbyist friend into his office. Babbitt told the Arizona Republic newspaper that the meeting and a carelessly written explanation to Congress helped create a misimpression that he let politics influence a decision on an application for an Indian casino in Wisconsin. Babbitt said the only thing he did wrong was to defend himself poorly and make himself accessible to an old friend. The Justice Department is investigating whether Babbitt bowed to political pressure in the department's 1995 rejection of an Indian casino that was opposed by tribes that donated to the Democratic Party. The dispute is part of a campaign finance scandal that has dominated Washington politics for more than a year. Now Attorney General Janet Reno is deciding whether to appoint an independent counsel to investigate the matter. The Indian Health Service has filled a critical administrative management position within the office of the director. James Cusson, a member of the Cato Tribe of Oklahoma, was selected as director of the Urban Indian Health Program, or UIHP. 
of the IHS. The duties of this position includes devising and assisting the director in the continuous improvement of the IHS health care delivery system, as well as providing policy analysis, consultation, and support to the agency. Native American journalism students are eligible for more than $20,000 in college scholarships to be awarded by the Native American Journals Association, also known as NAJA. This year, NAJA scholarships are helping 23 Native journalism students attend the colleges of their choice. Awards for the 1998-99 school year will be decided by the NAJA Education Committee in April of this year. For applications and further information, contact NAJA at Native American Journalists Association, 1433 East Franklin Avenue, Suite 11, Minneapolis, Minnesota, 55404. I'll be right back after this. Heartbeat Alaska is brought to you in part by the Aurora Alaska Premium Smoked Salmon and Seafoods Company, an Alaska Native-owned company proud to sponsor Heartbeat Alaska. And by Ute Air Alaska, official airlines of Heartbeat Alaska. Ute Air Alaska, taking you home. Indian Polytechnic Institute cross-country runner Brandon Leslie broke away from the pack of the National Junior College Athletic Association Championships at South Plains College last November. Against the 125 competitors, Leslie ran the five-mile race in 25 minutes and 19 seconds to finish as the top Division II male cross-country runner in the United States. And finally, Ryder Sherman Alexis movie, filmed in the inland northwest last spring, may be headed for the big time. Smoke Signals has been picked up by the Merrimax Films, the Disney-owned distributor of such critical and popular successes as Sling Blade, Pulp Fiction, and The English Patient. Last week, Smoke Signals was among 16 films to compete in the 1998 Sundance Film Festival. Thank you for listening and watching Heartbeat Alaska and Native News Across the Country. I'm John Active. Ilaput kunu nakut. Tungsu pasok tungsu ayagak suta kinunem tsu. Kinunem tasu tkit kaput jaf kenata ngiliu kaksuku. There's a Take a quick look at what's happening around the state of Alaska. December 1st is in the news again. It's the date slated for federal takeover of subsistence, fish and game management here in Alaska. Government lawyers last Friday met in the U.S. District Court in Washington, D.C. to transfer the subsistence suit to Alaska. Federal takeover could go into effect unless the state of Alaska amends its constitution to give rural priority to in hunting and fishing as required by the 1980 Alaska Lands Act. 
transferring the case to Alaska would hopefully alleviate the extra time it would take for a new judge to understand the complex issues in this case. Last summer's fishing disaster aid is coming through. Seven million dollars in federal disaster aid will be distributed to the Kuskokwim and Bristol Bay regions. The funds will be made available largely in the form of community development grants and also some will be made in personal loans, individual loans, also in fisheries research and economic development planning as Heartbeat Alaska reported earlier this year. It's been a struggle for many fishermen and their families. In Wales, Alaska, which by the way is the farthest west community in North America, perhaps the oldest community as well, they're taking a look at their past. The community is planning to recreate the Umiak and a sod house. Only two women in Wales, Alaska still know how to sew the split walrus hides used as a shell for the Umiak or whaling boat. The sod house will be typical of the sod houses built by the Inupiaq people of long ago. There's talk that perhaps tourists might be interested in an overnight stay. Never mind the tourists. How many Alaskans have stayed overnight in a traditional sod house? Not many, I'm sure, including me. I think it'd be neat. Send me your news. I'll be back in just a moment. <laughs>
is traditional among native villages in Alaska that neighbors takes care of neighbors. At one time, it was important for the survival of all that we look out for each other. In Sleep Mood, Alaska, they have a program that keeps that tradition going. Sleep Mute Alaska is located at a very remote area at the fork of the Kuskokwim and Holitna Rivers, 260 miles northwest of Anchorage, 78 miles east of Antioch. There aren't any roads in or out of the small village. It's very important that neighbors help neighbors. And I think that the students benefit immensely from it. Some of them have actually gone out and gotten the church ready for certain functions that take place here in Sleepmute. And uh, there's other people all the time that are asking for help. I'm Sophie Andernoff, Tribal Administrator for Sleepmute Traditional Council. And what I think of NHN, it's a good program, especially helping elders, and not only helping elders, but people around here who need help. Neighbors Helping Neighbors is a volunteer program formed by Jennifer Zakar, an 18-year-old student in Sleep Mute, Alaska. She decided she'd like to help the community and along with her teachers, started the volunteer work program. To begin with, she had to go from one elder's house to another to explain how the program worked. Then before she knew it, the program was underway. Students chop wood, wash dishes, get wood, sack it, they dump the trash, pack water. Not everyone in Sleep Mute Alaska has running water. All these chores are helpful to the elders as well as the students as they can earn credits in some cases. A lot of people would eat them, right? That don't just crap. Paul Nagark lives in Elam, Alaska. Every year, he goes crabbing for delicious crab. Elam, Alaska is located on the northwest shore of Norton Bay on the Seward Peninsula. It's located 65 miles east of Solomon and 96 miles east of Nome. Around 300 people live here, a mixture of Inupiaq and Yupik. Years ago, the Anubiak and Yupik people of this area would retrieve crabs by a hand line, a single line with bait. The trick then was to grab the crab just as it was brought to the surface before it felt air and escaped back into the water. Today, crabbing is made easier with crab pots. Never freeze. <laughs> Little bit. See that axe there? Dig that uh, crab bait out too. I use trout. We're using smelts for bait and trout. And I see that the crabs really like uh, trout for bait. Three of them. Four of them. <laughs> 
We travel to Florida for a Seminole Tribe fashion show. Jack's over there helping them out a little bit. They, uh... All these things take time. You don't want to rush a young one. They lie a little soul on you. You don't want to move. Thanks so much for joining us on Heartbeat Alaska, Native News and Native Entertainment. I'm Jeannie Green. Send me your video. Remember, just call 907-563-7440, and I'll tell you how we can get your news on the air. God bless you. Have a fabulous week, and we'll see you again next week.
tuanga e kuna pakako ile nanga tu sa tsugo te yo tu sa vi There's a heartbeat louder than thunder.